okay? What is the evolution theory part one? See, first, first what we gonna do, we gonna read the definition before we even go into the paragraph in the book on the origin of species, okay? First, we gonna read the paragraph. I mean, yeah, we gonna read the paragraph. Let's go. Evolution is what? Evolution is change in the heritable characteristics of biological populations over successive generations. These characteristics are the expressions of genes that are passed on from parent to offspring during reproduction. Different characteristics tend to exist within any given population as a result of mutation, genetic recombination, and other sources of genetic variation. Now that's going to be important, okay? That's going to be important because that's true. See, see, I, see, see I'm going to explain into detail the difference put between evolution and the evolution theory. The evolution theory is Darwinism, okay? The evolution theory is not evolution, okay? Let's be clear on that, okay? Because even when we're talking about heritable, the definition of heritable is characteristics or genes that are passed down to you through parental inheritance, okay? Through parental inheritance. And so with that being said, evolution, uh, evolution takes place within a single species, not outside of a single species. And I'm going to give an example in this presentation on snake venom, okay? Snake venom started off as a fluid within the stomach of the snake, which helped it, which helped protect it from harmful bacteria from the prey that it that it would consume. And so that stomach fluid eventually evolved into venom due to the beneficial effects that it played in the role of helping the snake catch its prey. That is a form of evolution. Same types of evolution have taken place with spiders. But now what happens is. When you start to equate that small standard of evolution into the, the uh, theoretical field of an animal metamorphing into another life form, now you are dealing with Darwinism and bullshit and fantasy, okay? So now, this is Darwin's, okay, original book, publicated in 1859, called The Origin of Species, okay? The evolution theory is the over-exaggerated theory of Darwinism, published in 1859 using small bases of evolution of mutations in a gene to falsely account for the origins of all species on Earth, shown in upcoming slides. So I want y'all to, and I'm gonna go into detail, so don't worry, but I just want y'all to have a simple understanding right now of the difference between evolution and Darwinism. Now let's keep it moving. What is Darwinism? This is Charles Darwin, by the way, okay, the, the man who created the evolution theory, okay, in 1859. Uh, he was born February 12, 1809. He died April 19, 1882. Darwinism is the theory of the evolution of species by natural selection advanced by Charles Darwin, okay? So now why is this important? There's a difference between evolution and Darwinism. So when you hear people talking about the evolution theory, they're 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 talking about Darwinism, but maybe they don't even know it or maybe they do. But this is why people hold the evolution theory so strongly, because they take small facts of science in regards to evolution, which are actually true. And then they be, they try to mask that as facts behind their illusional aspect of Darwinism. The evolution theory is not based on evolution. It's based on on Darwinism, okay? And do not let nobody tell you no different. Now let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. Charles Darwin's evolution theory, okay? And we got the definition of heritable, like I told you. And I'm gonna read it in a minute, as well as natural selection. Charles Darwin's evolution theory is what? The theory that organisms change over time as a result of changes in heritable physical or behavioral traits. Such changes will allow an organism to adapt to their environment for survival, okay? The two main points of evolution is one, all life is connected and related to each other. This is false, and I'm gonna break that down. And then point number two of the evolution theory is that the diversity of life came about because of modifications in populations 
that were driven by natural selection. This is also false. Note, natural selection is defined as survival of the fittest. Now, let me read these two definitions before I tell you why these two main points of evolution are false. Heritable, by definition, according to biology, is what? Of a characteristic transmitted from parent to offspring. Okay? Transmitted from parent to offspring. Okay? Now, why is this important? Any basic biologist or anybody who studies genetics knows that any, any two separate species cannot naturally sexually reproduce. OK, which means that it would be impossible for you to get some heritable traits naturally outside of your own species. OK, that's for one. OK, which means how can all of these animals have turned into other animals and then turned into humans? Because what y'all not understanding about the evolution theory is it go deeper than the monkey turned into the man. They say that microorganisms turn into some kind of other organisms and those turn into dinosaurs and dinosaurs turn into birds and then birds turn into motherfucking mammals and whales and Tyrannosaurus Rex turn into a goddamn chicken and then all of these animals turn into a monkey and then the monkey turn into a black person and the black person turn into a white person. That's what they saying, okay? That is impossible for animals to receive amino acids and proteins which will become genes and characteristics from parents that they can't naturally reproduce with. That's impossible, okay? Now we're talking about natural selection. Natural selection according to biology is the process whereby organisms better adapted to their environment tend to survive and produce more offspring. The theory of its action was first fully expounded by Charles Darwin and is now believed to be the main process that brings about evolution. So I want y'all to understand when you talk about survival of the fittest and natural selection and all of these weak ass terms y'all like to use, y'all don't even know that y'all are using the terminology of Charles Darwin. Not to mention Charles Darwin was a full blown racist and I'm going to be going into that. And so with that being said, Charles Darwin used these false scientific notions in order to fictitiously substantiate the origin of life on planet Earth. OK, Charles Darwin also thought the Earth was six thousand years old. Picture that. Hence, hence monkeys. Uh, I mean, people got done evolving into white people six, six thousand years old, according to him. The Earth started in the Bible six thousand years old. And so we still keep coming back to this six thousand year fictitious timeline. Now, let's get it on now. Now we're going to deal with Darwinism versus evolution. OK, evolution is what? The process by which different kinds of living organisms are thought to have developed and diversified from earlier forms during history on Earth. OK, now this is uh, synonymous with Darwinism and natural selection. So this is Charles Darwin's form of evolution. OK, now let's go to the scientific definition of evolution. The gradual development of something, especially from a simple to more complex form. Hence the example I gave on snake venom. Now let's go to Darwinism once again. The theory of evolution of a species by natural selection advanced by Charles Darwin. Now, evolution takes place within a species, not outside of it. For example, snake venom originally developed from fluids in a snake's stomach, which was used to help protect it from harmful bacteria while eating its prey. Conclusion, the evolution theory is the fantasized hypothesis that the DNA of an organism is not only evolving its own self, but into an entirely different species. This is impossible. This is impossible. Okay. This is impossible. Now let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. Charles Darwin was a racist. See, because before I even go in on the evolution theory, before I go into genetics, before I go into the science, I want to show you the mind behind the man of 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 whom which gave you this bullshit rhetoric give me one second family i gotta sip this tea hold on all right i'm back i gotta give you the mind behind the man who gave you the rhetoric now this is charles darwin's book which was released in 1859 as you can see it's called the origin of species by means of natural selection now if you zoom in on this book you can see right here. I zoomed in on this part. It's right here. It says by means of natural selection or the preservation of favored races in the struggle for life. Favored races. 
So you can see that Charles Darwin felt like white people were the favored race. Once again, let's go back. What is natural selection? It was introduced by Charles Darwin. Natural selection is what? Only the strong survive, survival of the fittest. And so according to Charles Darwin, white people are the most fittest and strongest and advanced form of human life on the planet. See, we're not going to play this game. We're not going to play this game. We're not going to play this game. It says it right there. Preservation of the favored races in the struggle of life. And so before I continue on, let me say that. Let me say this. If you are teaching the evolution theory, if you know somebody who is teaching the evolution theory, they are teaching you that white people are the favorite race on the planet Earth according to evolution of genetics and natural selection. So God or the universe naturally evolved man into a, a, into a suitable human form which can best fit them today. And that form today is white people since white people are the newest people on the planet. I'm not making this shit up. It's his book. This is his book. This the original copy. See? This the original copy. This not that shit you get in college where they didn't read by. Look, look, original, co original, I mean, origin of species, old versus new printouts. This the original copy with the racism on the front. Now, these the new shits that you get off Amazon. You see, they don't got the favorite species on it no more. They just say by means of natural selection. But we know what natural selection is. Natural selection, okay, is survival of the fittest. Natural selection was created by Charles Darwin. Natural selection is saying that nature created white people as the most modern and advanced and fittest form of human existence. So you're not fooling nobody with that. You're not fooling, you're not fooling nobody with that. Look, the origin of species. And okay, you see, they took it off the front. And so I just want to let y'all know that this is the original print. And this is what it said boldly and blatantly, okay? Preservation of favorite races in the struggle of life, struggle for life. But they took that and clinked that shit up, and now we just say natural selection. So now you be in college in your biology class, and your, and your biology teacher just say, well, according to natural selection, every time you hear natural selection, you need to know that that is an undercover racist ass term being used against you. Point blank period, straight drop. Point blank period, straight drop. And so let's keep it rocking. Let's keep it rocking. Let's keep it moving. Okay? Let's keep it rocking. Let's keep it moving. No games will be played today. Let me give y'all an example of real evolution. See? See, we're going to do real evolution versus fake evolution. I'm not going to just tell y'all about the snake venom. I'm going to bring y'all the receipts. This is from National Geographic. It's called the, it's called on the, it's called Science and Innovation on the origin of venom, okay? National Geographic. You can go look this shit up yourself, okay? Here you see you have a yellow viper on the front. It says, venoms did not pop out of the void, okay? They started out as genes for further functions. I mean, for other functions. Venom genes are closely related to other genes that carry out entirely different jobs, both in venomous animals and non-venomous ones. Some venomous, I mean, some venoms are closely related to the immune system proteins, okay? For example, which attack bacteria invading the body. Others are closely related to digestive enzymes. Both, I mean, excuse me, how does an enzyme end up as a venom? There are a number of ways. A common type of mutation causes DNA to get uh, duplicated. At first, the duplication just means that twice as much of the original protein gets made. But then the extra gene can mutate again without harming the function of the original one. A mutation can, for example, change the signal a gene gets about where it should make its protein. Instead of becoming active in the pancreas, for example, it might start making proteins in the mouth. Okay, now follow me here because I'm finna make a point. When an animal bites its prey, the enzyme can then get into the wound. It happens to have a harmful effect. Even a small effect can help the animal catch more prey and thus by thus be favored by natural selection. And the new protovenom gene may undergo more evolution. It may become more and more toxic or it may duplicate and two venom genes may become deadly and different uh, in different ways. Two genes can become four, four, eight, and on and on. The rate of which 
Cone snails duplicate venom genes, scientists have found, at the fastest gene duplicate, I mean, is the fastest uh, gene duplication ever found in the animal kingdom. Each new copy of venom gene can get fine-tuned even further. They may mutate a single base of their DNA, or they may undergo more dramatic changes. Genes are made up of segments called exons, and cells assemble the information in the exons in order to make a corresponding protein. The venom genes exons sometimes get skipped or shuffled, producing new venom molecules with new properties. The new venom allows animals to hunt new kinds of prey or help them do a better job of killing old victims that evolve new defenses. There's a lot left for scientists to discover about venom evolution. One of the most surprising recent discoveries is that the borrowing involved in venom evolution doesn't go one way. Take the nutri, uh, the nutri, the nutriuretic venom found in snakes like a pit viper. It evo it evolved from proteins found in other animals, including us, which relax the walls of blood vessels. In snakes, it evolved into a venom that relaxes blood walls so fast that it causes a debilitatingly rapid blood. I mean, debilitatingly rapid drop in blood pressure. But in pit vipers, one of these nutriuretic venoms is produced inside the brain. Now, why is this important? Why is this important in real evolution? Real evolution versus fake evolution? Conclusion. The snake venom was evolved from proteins that was already existent within the snake through natural heritable means, okay? AKA the snake got it from his parents. If the components do not already exist in the genes, they cannot be. So how did the monkey evolve into a human while lacking the amino acids and proteins and genes to do so? Okay, so this is real evolution versus fake evolution. The only way that the snake was able to develop snake venom is because it already had the proteins inside of itself to evolve into a more potent aspect of its already self. I mean, of its already existing self. It already had a harmful liquid existing in itself that was used to catch prey. The liquid itself only evolved into a more potent form. Okay? That is evolution. Evolution is not the fucking snake evolved into an eagle so that it could catch prey in the fucking trees. Okay? The snake not gonna evolve into a goddamn motherfucking jaguar so that it can catch bigger prey. That's not how evolution works. The snake can only evolve amongst his own genetic uh, pathway, which is already inherited by his parents. The snake not going to evolve into no goddamn crocodile. So if the monkey has a certain genetic structure, how can it evolve to a being which has a more complex genetic structure than it, e than it even has in its own blueprint? You can't do that. You can't do that. So let me give y'all an example of how amino acids and genes work in proteins before I go to the next slide. Think of a think of a bag of Legos, okay? If I have a bag of Legos, I can create whatever I want. If you if I let you borrow that same bag of Legos, you could create whatever you want. Now, amino acids are the individual Legos. Once you build something with those Legos, now those amino acids aka Legos have became a structure aka a protein. And then that protein carries out a specific characteristic or function within the genes of that organism. Now, this organism in this case is a snake. And so that being said, the building blocks of this snakes, a.k.a. the amino acids, can only be evolved upon what Legos this snake is comprised of. So if this snake is only comprised of red and blue Legos, it can't never evolve into a structure that has green and yellow Legos. It can only create other forms of itself based upon blue and red Legos, period. And so you're not about to sit here and tell me you got a bag of fucking Legos and only colors you got is blue and red and somehow you creating shit that's purple and yellow. That, I'm not going for that. That's, that's not how science works. And so you're not going to tell me that the monkey has a certain blueprint of, of amino acids which create a certain blueprint of proteins which give it a certain blueprint of DNA but then it evolved into a more complex form of life, which contains proteins and amino acids that not even the monkey itself had in the first place. Who the fuck do you think you're talking to? I'm not one of these dummies 
out here who go for shit. I am highly intelligent, highly well studied, highly well versed. And ain't nobody going for that. Ain't nobody going for that. And so that being said, let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. See? Real versus fake evolution. See? See? Because he had to double back. See, this is second book. He released that first racist ass book on evolution in 1859. And then what happened was people start asking the same questions that I started asking because Charles Darwin, and let me say this because a lot of people don't know this. Charles Darwin has zero knowledge or access to knowledge about genetics. Okay, let me restate that again before I prove my point. Charles Darwin had zero had zero knowledge on genetics or zero access to any fields of genetic studies. And with that being said, how did a man who has zero understanding on the way that genes work, on how genes are constructed or comprised, period, how is he able and still able today to be accredited with the goddamn origins of organisms on the planet Earth genetically when he himself had no knowledge of genetics at all. Come on now, miss me with that. Now, what happened was that Origin of Species book didn't work. And so Charles Darwin had no knowledge of genetics and he came with a second book in 1871. Okay, so this was about 12 years later. And, uh, he tried to further support his evolution theory. And this book right here was called Sexual Selection. It was called uh, Selection in Relation to Sex. I mean, excuse me, it was called The Descent of Man and Selection in Relation to Sex. Now, sexual selection, by definition, is an organism's ability to obtain or successfully compete with the mate. Note, this book is irrelevant since species don't mate, outside, don't mate with races outside of their race. Okay? And so this still would not prove the validity of the evolution theory or hybrids, okay? Because hybrids is the offspring of two species who, not, who do not naturally reproduce. And in order to create a hybrid, you have to genetically engineer it, period. And so let me go back. He came out with this book to try to prove this weak ass theory. So basically what Charles Darwin is saying at this point is, okay, maybe the animals didn't magically evolve into other animals. Maybe they evolved into a certain form of another animal then when they got there they had sex with another species then that species had a baby and then that species kept evolving and then at some point in time in that species life it had sex with another species and then that species had a hybrid and then that species started evolving and then somewhere in that species life it found another random species that was evolving too and had another baby and then that shit happened until it happened for millions of years all the way up until a monkey was produced and then the monkey turned into a nigga and here we are that's basically what this book is saying, okay? The descent of man, selection in, I mean, selection in relation to sex. And he came out with this whack-ass book in order to try to back up his first racist-ass book. But the point I'm trying to make is that book is trash garbage because no animal have you ever seen in the history of history has sex with another animal outside of his own species. You're not going to see that. I have never watched Animal Planet and seen a hippopotamus have sex with a giraffe. Never in my life. And even if it did happen, which it never happens, but even if it did happen, they would not be able to impregnate one another and produce an offspring. So you can take this book and you can take your college intuition and you can take your degree in evolution and you can throw that shit in the garbage because it's trash. It's trash. It's trash. Now, let's keep it moving. Was the monkey, uh, was the evolving monkey a female monkey part one? Okay. Because atoms produce molecules, molecules produce cells, cells produce tissue, tissue produce organs, organs produce organ systems, organ systems become organisms. And the first known humanoid organism on the planet Earth was a black woman. That's not to be debated. OK. And so here's my question. Here's a sub metacentric chromosome, a.k.a. the chromosome of a, of a woman. Here's a man's chromosome, OK, which is just known as a metacentric chromosome. This is an XX chromosome. This is an XY chromosome. The XY chromosome is an XX chromosome minus 2.8% of its own genetic mass, as you can see here. And so now, why is this important? You can see with the evolution theory, they say the monkey evolved into a man, okay? But how could the monkey have evolved into a man if we know genetically woman was here before man? So that right there show you the flaw once again. The monkey would have had to evolve into a woman. 
And then the woman would have had to evolve into a man if that's the case. And so now that leaves, leaves this question. Was the monkey that evolved a female monkey? Okay. Was it just a whole race of only female monkeys? Huh? Was there more female monkeys than male monkeys? Because if women were here before men, how did a monkey evolve into a man? How did the man beat the woman on the planet Earth if the woman beat the man here? And then we have to ask ourselves, okay, if there was a whole race of female monkeys that evolved into females, okay? If there was a whole race of uh, female monkeys that evolved into females, how were the female monkeys sexually reproducing with one another? Okay? How were they sexually reproducing with one another in order to sustain their own survival? And so I'm not going for that. Let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. Okay? The evolution theory is a lie, part one. Let's go. The evolution theory is a lie, part one. Now, they say that the monkey evolved into humans, a.k.a. Africans, and then Africans migrated out of Africa, which I'm going to show in the next slide, into colder climates. And then basically this African black male went into a colder climate and lost his pigmentation. But what they're not telling you is non-black people are not human. They're 93% human, 7% Neanderthal. They're considered hybrids, which means just because you go into a cold climate does not explain how you obtain 7% of Neanderthal DNA. Mind you, black people today don't have any Neanderthal DNA just like we didn't back then. And so the question is, how did a black person migrate into a climate and obtain Neanderthal DNA that even today we still don't have? And so this is a lie, okay? This is a rose in the summertime. This is a rose in the wintertime. You want to know what's funny? The rose still has its pigmentation. Flowers have melanin, okay? They have chlorophyll, okay? The only difference between human melanin is we have iron in our blood and plants have magnesium. If we was to switch to iron and magnesium, the plant will, will have neuromelanin and then we will have chlorophyll. Only difference, okay? Plants even produce melatonin at night, just like we produce in our brain. So plants have melanin. This is a scientific fact. And so if the if the if the rose in a cold climate still did not lose this pigmentation, how the fuck did we lose ours? How did we get calcified pineal glands? How did we lose 7% of our DNA? How did that happen? And so this is bullshit. Okay. Climate ain't never been responsible for changing nobody's DNA, okay? Ain't nobody going for that. They got Eskimos that still pitch black. And then on top of that, if people really did change skin pigmentation due to being in the cold, everybody around the planet Earth would be the same exact skin color at any, at any given season, at any given time. It wouldn't be no such thing as skin color. It, uh, skin color would be predicated upon and determined by where you live in regards to your climate and weather. And so everybody in America during the summertime will be black. Everybody during the wintertime will be white. It will be no such thing as white or black people. We will be one people who change like chameleons. Okay? So get the fuck out of here with that weak shit. Now they say, okay, Africans migrated out of Africa and went to these cold ass regions. Okay? This is where they say we went. All up in Russia all up in Asia, all up in Europe, <coughs> excuse me, all up in Germany. And they say we turn white up in here. Okay. Th now, this is my question. Okay. They say we migrated to these areas and we turned white. That's a nice theory. But what about black people who were already all over the goddamn planet? Okay. What about black people who was already in South America? What about black people who was already in North America? What about black people who was already in Japan? The Nagas. What about black people who was already in Australia? What about black people who was already every fucking where on the planet Earth? Where did they migrate to in order to become white? Okay? Where did they migrate to? So are you saying if, if, if black people migrated to these areas, are you saying that these areas were already empty? Are you saying that are you saying that Australia was here and nobody was no no black person was already in Australia? Is that what you're saying to me? 
Are you saying that North America and South America was here, but nobody, but nobody was all it was empty. This whole motherfucking continent, top and bottom and central, was empty. Is that what you're telling me? Is you telling me that China was here? Okay. And Asia was here. And it was empty. Okay. Is that what you're telling me? And so that this is trash. But the main question that I want to have is why would Africans leave a thriving civilization for no reason? Okay. Why would black people leave an abundance of resources and food to go live in the cold? Okay. Why would you do that? What sense does that make? Why would niggas who in Africa who have an abundance of food, okay, who have an abundance of food, who have an abundance of resources, who have a beautiful climate, who have an abundance of animals that don't exist nowhere else on the planet Earth, why would they leave, pick up and leave and take their ass all the way to the mountains in Russia? For, for what? What was they trying to do? Please explain to me. Because normally when somebody migrate, it's due to a scarcity in food. It's due to survival reasons. Or it's due to natural disasters that force a population to migrate. Nobody just gets the fuck up and migrate for no reason. Okay? So somebody please explain to me why the fuck did black people say, you know what? Fuck Africa. We're going to go live in the goddamn mountains where it ain't no goddamn food. We're going to go We're gonna go live in the Caucasus Mountains. Why, why did black people leave Africa and move to the Caucasus Mountains for? Somebody explain that to me for no reason. Okay. Let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. Okay. Evolution theory is a lie part two. Okay. Blacks slash albinos versus whites. Okay. And I'm going to go into detail in this a little more in the uh, presentation. But I just want to let y'all know. Let me turn my volume up because I got a video I'm about to play. I just want to let y'all know an albino is not a white person. Okay. An albino is still an African. Let's get that on the wax. Okay. Albinos are still 100% human. White people are only 93% human, four, and 7% uh, Neanderthal. Black people have a homo sapien bone structure. White people have a Neanderthal bone structure. Uh, hence, thicker skulls, thicker bones. Now, uh, whatchamacallit, black people have neuromelanin, okay? Uh, European people have what is called pheomelanin. Now, uh, when we talk about hair follicles, black people have flocculus. White people have canine and, pr and primate hair follicles, as well as Dravidian people, Indian people, and all other non-black uh, Neanderthal people. Now, we have functioning pineal glands, okay? White people have calcified pineal glands, period. Black people were originally RH negative. White people were originally RH positive. RH stands for rhesus monkey. And so that being said, how did a European, I mean, how did a black person or an, or an albino evolve into a Neanderthal and, and, and evolve into a canine in a primate-based organism? You can't explain that. That doesn't happen. And I'm going to break this down in a minute. I'm just working my way up. Okay, let's go to part three. See? See, now I'm going to let a white person tell you. This is a professor speaking on genetics, and I'm going to let him tell you that only Africans are 100% human being, and that white people are 93% human, 7% Neanderthal. Neanderthal is is primate, it's monkey. Let's go. Listen. Here we go. Let me play the tape. Let's go. Hold on, y'all. Now, uh, really, this 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 is going to sound silly, but this is really really important cutting edge genetics. One of the, one of the areas I'm really lucky to, to I'm, I'm blessed to, to work in three distinct areas of biology, immunology, genetics, and reproduction. And on the genetic side, I get to go to conferences and hear about advances in genetics in all species. And I was just at one a couple of weeks ago down at the Cold Spring Harbor Lab in Long Island. And uh, I learned a, a bit about um, what's being known about the, the, gene, the genome of Neanderthals, the genetic makeup of Neanderthals. That, the uh, genome sequencers, uh, led by Svante Pabo, who works in Germany, has taken tiny little fragments of Neanderthal bones, isolated DNA, and determined the genome of the Neanderthal, and used that information to um, determine, using genetic methods, how, how long ago Neanderthals and humans 
were a single species, where the common ancestor was. They've also been able to compare um, human genomes and ask the question of whether there's any evidence of Neanderthal genes in the human genome. Listen up. And they found that there is. And, it's, and the amount is quite significant, upwards of 5 to 7%. Okay, listen. Neanderthals used to live in the Neander Valley. You see, he got the European up there. You could have called it the, the Cayuga Lake Basin, but that's where they lived. Um, and out of Africa came the modern humans. What? And they, the word the, the geneticists use is admixed. They admixed with the Neanderthals. Listen. And they, they all used to live in caves in those days like this. Came out of Africa, had mixed with the Neanderthals. This was Neanderthal territory. There was another group of, of uh, Neanderthal-like creatures called the Denisovans. They lived up here in Siberia. And they have a, th their genome has been sequenced. They were distinct from the Neanderthals. And um, you, so you can find in people of European and Asian ancestry what? evidence of about 7%, 5 to 10% of genome, of your genome, is common with that of Neanderthal. Bam! We've been separated you from heard them by for, for 30,000 years. You heard them. And in the Europeans and Asians. In Papua New Guinea, in those islands up there, there's evidence for, for, for a different kind of genome, which is probably the Denisovan genome. And they might have 7% Neanderthal and 5% Denisovan. So they might be 12 or 15% different from us. And in fact, the the Africans who came out from Africa have no evidence of any Neanderthal genes in them, no evidence of that mixture. So they're the real pure humans, homo sapiens. Heard what he said, right? Africans. It's really interesting. It gives you a lot to think about. Heard what he said, right? Africans, right. Africans are the real humans. You heard what he said. Africans are the real humans. And, and somebody in the crowd started looking crazy. He said, right. And you heard the white lady start laughing. See, we're not going to play them games. We're not going to play them games. You heard what he said. Let's keep it moving. Look. Come on, keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. Look, the evolution theory is a lie, part three. Okay? And I'm going to come back to this a little later in the presentation, but I want to prove my point. I want to prove my point. Okay? What genetic characteristics would give the brain of the monkey the ability to evolve into the brain of a human? Okay? The monkey is not a reptile. Where did the monkey get the proteins to evolve the reptilian part of the brain? Where did the monkey get the proteins to evolve a pineal gland? Okay? Because a cobra has a pineal gland. A monkey don't have no goddamn pineal gland. This is why our ancestors put the cobra on their head or, or, or use serpents for spiritual d divine purposes all across the world, okay? Because we share a, a, a sacred spiritual essence, okay, that, that we call serpentine energy. Even the kundalini energy, we call that the serpent energy, okay? And so that being said, where did the monkey get the proteins from to evolve into an organism which contains reptile-based uh genetic constructs that it in its original form did not have cut that shit out cut that shit out look at the frontal lobe of the human brain and look at the frontal lobe of the pineal gland of, 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 of the human brain compared to the monkey the monkey does not have a neuromelanin nerve tract it don't got a pineal gland it don't got a reptilian part of the brain it don't have so many different things that i can break down it doesn't have flocculus it doesn't have dipple antennas that we have in our skull okay how did the monkey's hair evolve into coarse Negro hair? Okay, or Negroid hair, as science would call it. You can't, you can't explain that. You can't explain that. Let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. The evolution theory is a lie, part four. This is by Dr. Fazel Rana. This is called the Neanderthal to Human Link Severed. This is from April, April 1st, 2003. He said, over the last five years, Astonishing advances in ancient DNA analysis have provided remarkable insight into Neanderthal genetics. As a result, the evolutionary connection 
between humans and Neanderthal has been severed. In other words, evolutionary biolo biologists no longer think of Neanderthals as the transitional species linking to primitive bipedal primates, such as Homo erectus to modern humans. humans. This is a doctor telling you that they believe the evolution theory is bullshit. 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 And so miss me with that. Miss me with that bullshit. Let's keep it moving. I'm not done. Evolution theory is a lie, part five. Okay. They say the monkey, okay, turned into the man how many years ago? Okay. They say modern man got here about 35,000 years ago. Okay. They say modern man got here about 35, anywhere between 6,000 to, 6, to 35,000 years ago. But according to the ancient center of uh, the Australia ancient, I mean, the Australian Research Center for Ancient DNA, they say Europeans as a people are younger than we thought. Okay. Europeans, uh, excuse me, did not, did not come about on the planet Earth till roughly 65,000 years ago. Okay. And this is from the head of the research center, Alan Cooper. This is from National Geographic. This is from National Geographic. So you're going to tell National Geographic they lying? Look at this. Dr. Jonathan Pitcher estimates that the point in time when the genes of the Asian and European populations were altered was 6,600 years ago. Okay. 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 And so according to European and Asian genes, they're only 6,000 years old. Now they say that Yakub created white people, but Yakub is a verb word. It's an action word. Ya Yakub is a Hebrew word, which means subplanter. So when they say Yakub created other races, they're saying that uh, some kind of entity subplanted those races on the planet Earth, which is facts. That is a fact. There was no motherfucking excuse me, evolution, but there was some genetic engineering going on. That's a fact. Okay, let's go. Keep it moving. Let me ask you a question if you believe in evolution. Okay. Did the wolf evolve into a poodle? Huh? Ask yourself that. Did the wolf evolve into a poodle? No, it did not. It was genetically engineered. A poodle is a mutt. Okay. The wolf don't it why the fuck listen if evolution is real and all dogs common ancestor is the wolf but dogs are not a natural species on the planet earth why the fuck is the wolf not evolving into poodles today huh 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 let me ask you that question again if if the if the poodle is related to the wolf and all dogs they say are related to the wolf but the wolf is the only original canine on the planet Earth, and this is a hybrid. Why is the wolf still not evolving into goddamn canines today? And so if the monkey evolved into black people and black people evolved into white people, why is monkey still not turning into black people today? And why is black people still not turning into white people? Huh? Answer that question. Answer me that. Answer me that. Answer me that. Answer me that. And so if the wolf didn't naturally turn into a poodle black people didn't naturally turn into a white person if natural selection didn't turn this goddamn wolf into this goddamn poodle natural selection didn't turn this goddamn man into this goddamn white man that didn't happen so the same way that the poodle got here is the same way that all other races got here genetic engineering you're not gonna you're not gonna motherfucking uh you're not gonna play with me I'm the right one. You're not going to play with me like that. You're not going to play with me like that. Let's keep it moving. Now we want to talk about metamorphosis. Okay? Now we want to talk about metamorphosis. Because a nigga might try that. So I got to go there. Okay? Metamorphosis is what? In the insects and is an insect or amphibian, right? The process of transformation from an immature form to an adult form in two or more distinct stages. Second definition, a change of the form or nature of a thing or a person into a completely different one by natural or supernatural means. Okay? So you might say, well, Pharaoh, how can a monkey turn into a black person and a black person turn into a white person if a caterpillar could turn into a butterfly 
or if a tadpole could turn into a frog. I'll tell you why. Because the tadpole already has the proteins it needs to evolve into the frog. The caterpillar already has the genetic proteins and blueprint and genome that it needs to turn into the butterfly. The monkey doesn't have the proteins and genome it needs to turn into an African. Okay? The African don't even have the genes it need. I mean, we need to turn into a white person. Period. And so with that being said, don't try to don't try to insinuate metamorphosis in there because it's not going to work. Now let's keep it moving. If you believe in the evolution theory, you believe in this. Okay? If you believe a monkey could turn into a man, you believe a damn a damn vampire or a damn man could turn into a fucking bat. That's what you believe. You believe a damn man could turn into a fucking werewolf on the full moon. Okay? You probably watch Teen Titans and think this motherfucker real. This is Beast Boy. If you don't know who this is, this is Beast Boy off of Teen Titans, and he could turn into any beast or any animal. This motherfucker turned into elephants and giant squids and jaguars and bears and all kind of shit. Okay? And so if you believe <laughs> if you believe and all them animals turned into a monkey. And then that monkey turned into a human. This the type of shit you believe, okay? You believe motherfuckers go blah blah, and and then turn into bats and fly off in the fucking night. That's what you believe, okay? You better stop. You better stop watching sci-fi movies and shit. Let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving, okay? Extraterrestrial genes proving that blacks did not evolve. See, extraterrestrial genes. Proving that blacks did not evolve. See, now I'm finna hit you niggas in your head. Because if you're talking about, okay, animals, uh, whatchamacallit? If you're talking about animals, all right, evolving into humans, okay? Now we want to talk about where did the genes come from inside of black people, okay? Where did the genes come from? inside of black people that didn't originate on the planet earth inside the animals or any other entity etc all right inside the animals or any other entity etc and so with that being said okay i'm gonna break y'all all the way up and i'm gonna break y'all all the way down straight up i'm gonna break y'all all the way up and i'm gonna break y'all all the way down let's go and so with that being said Mystery of our 145 alien genes. Scientists discover DNA is not from our ancestors and say it could uh, change how we think about evolution. This is from the Daily Mail Science. Okay. Look at this. Remember, it says humans. Okay. Remember, black people, okay, are the only true humans on the planet Earth, according to science. Humans, aka black people, contain alien genes not passed down from our ancestors, researchers discover. They say we acquired essential foreign genes from microorganisms cohabiting their environment in ancient times. The study challenges conventional views that animal evolution relies solely on genes passed down through ancestral lines and says the process could still be going on. Look, researchers published in the open access journal Genome Biology focuses on the horizontal gene transfer the transfer of between animals and live, living organisms in the same environment, okay? And so we have alien genes, okay, confirmed by science. This is a fact. Now, let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving, okay? O negative blood type, okay? The O blood type is the oldest blood type, okay? And it shows a connection, okay, to ancient cultures. Now. This says humans with the blood type Rh negative belong to an extraterrestrial lineage. Okay. Scientists now believe they have found out the fascinating thing in I mean a fascinating thing in regards to Rh positive and negative. According to this scientific theory, in the distance past extraterrestrial beings visited the earth and created through genetic manipulation the Rh negative uh, with an intention on creating a race of slaves. This is bullshit. But the point I'm trying to make is. Uh, the acknowledgement of the Rh negative being foreign to the planet Earth. 
Now, all of that, them trying to say uh, black people was created as a race of slaves for aliens. Of course, anything that they say they got to do with us, they're going to put us in slaves, slavery. So we was day slaves. We was Arab slaves. And now they finding out that we got alien DNA. And now all of a sudden, instead of our, 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 our lineage being divine, now we was alien slaves. But I don't give a fuck about that. The point I'm trying to make is they are acknowledging that our bloodline and our genes extend beyond this very planet. Now, let's keep it moving. OK, because if evolution takes place on the planet Earth, how the fuck did we how the fuck did we evolve from a from an animal and develop genes that the animal don't even got? Because our genes is not even from this fucking planet. Let's keep it moving. OK, this is science alert. OK. Extraterrestrial genes proving black did not evolve part three. Hints of an un unidentified extinct human species have been found in the DNA of, of uh, modern Malaysians, those living in the region of the South Pacific North, Northeast Australia. According to the new genetic modeling, the species is unlikely to be Neanderthal or Denisovan, two ancient species that are represented in the fossil record, but could represent a third unknown human relative that has so far eluded archaeologists. Once again, the species is unlikely to be Neanderthal and or, or Denisovan, which means it's unlikely to be white or any other race. It's black. Now, this is an entire human species, okay, that they say is extinct within black people's DNA. And the reason they say that it's extinct is because they haven't found no bones of it, okay? And so could this be the species? that we exist from or extend from as black people, okay? Because just because you ain't found no dead bodies don't mean they dead, period, okay? And so they just told you it's unlikely to be a white person or an Indian person. These are black people. And so who the fuck did we, who the fuck did they evolve from? Huh? How are you studying? How, how can you say you truly studying the evolution of black people and, and, and say that the monkey evolved from us if we got genes of a species that you haven't even found any archaeological findings on to study our evolution from. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. I'm going to knock this shit all the way down. Let's go. Let's keep it moving. Okay. Genetic origins of non-African descendants part one. All non-Africans are part Neanderthal genetics confirmed. This is from the July 18, 2011 edition of Molecular Biology and Evolution. OK, from the University of Montreal. OK, if your heritage is non-African, you are part Neanderthal, period, 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 period. Ain't nobody about to argue with y'all. And so this is a black person from Africa. This is a black woman from North America. These are the Khoisan people from Africa. Never had sex with nobody outside of Africa. Yes, they're naturally light skinned. These are uh. Black people from the Adamant Islands or near China, and this is a black woman from Jamaica. All of these black women from around the fucking world are 100% human beings. If you do not descend from one of these black women, okay, you are 93% human being, 7% Neanderthal. And so, even if the evolution theory was true, okay, even if the evolution theory was true, okay, let me say that one more time. Even if the evolution theory was true, it does not apply to black people. OK, it does not apply to black people. I'm not going to keep saying that. And so with that being said, let me keep it moving. Let me keep it moving. Let me keep it moving. All right, let's go. And so y'all want to talk about. Uh, y'all want to talk about. Hybrids, OK. And albinos. This is an albino black man. Okay. This is an albino black man. Okay. This is an albino black man. You see them lips? You see them nose? You see that nose? You see that curly woolly hair? He still has all of the genetic uh, properties of an African. His DNA is still 100% human. Be human. The, the only thing is his. Uh, his his uh OCA two gene, which is the gene responsible in black people for producing melanin in the pigment of their skin, is is non-active. So he doesn't produce melanin in his skin. That's it. 
That doesn't mean he's a fucking Neanderthal. Now let's go to the definition of hybrid. Hybrid is the offspring of two plants or animals of different species or varieties, such as a mule, which is a hybrid of a donkey and a horse. Okay. And two hybrids, I mean, in order to create a hybrid, you have to genetically engineer them. This is actually a sub uh subcategory of genetic engineering. Now, this is where white people come from. Okay, when you're talking about an albino, they're not talking about an African albino, they're talking about a Dravidian albino. So this is a Dravidian man. AKA an Indian, one of the motherfuckers that be in India who y'all always thinking that they black. This is not a black person. This is not an African. We're not related to this motherfucker. We don't know this motherfucker. This is a Dravidian, okay? When this Dravidian man produces an albino, this is what he looks like. Now, you might think that this is a white person. This is not a white person. This is not a Caucasian. This is an albino him, okay? This is what he looks like when his OCA2 gene is non active now when you take a dravidian and you genetically engineer it okay this is what you produce now this is a caucasian notice how the caucasian looks just like an albino dravidian so when they keep talking about oh white people came from albinos put a motherfucking stamp on it because any race can produce an albino a white person can even produce an albino what are you talking about I seen a white albino before. You never seen a white albino, motherfucker? You never seen uh what's that goddamn movie? With Jim Carrey. Me, myself, and Irene with Whitey. <laughs> Any race can produce an albino. What you talking about? So when they say white people came from albinos, put a stamp on it. Did he come from a black albino, a Chinese albino, a white albino, a Puerto Rican albino, a motherfucking Spanish albino? What kind of albino? He came from the Dravidian albino. We're not gonna play them games today. We're not going to play them games today. Let's keep it moving. Okay? Look. See, we want to talk about all other races. Okay? It, this is a Mexican. Man, this is a Mexican woman. If you notice, the Mexican man looked just like a mongoloid, a.k.a. a Chinese man. Because in science, you got three phenotype groups. You got Negroids, Mongoloids, uh, and then you got, uh, excuse me, Caucasians. Now, mongoloids are like Chinese people, Caucasians, Koreans, and, and all of them type of uh, humans. Then you got Caucasians got their own group, which is like Russians and Britons and Europeans, and et cetera. Then you got Negroids, which is black people. And so that being said, when you when, in order to make a Spanish person, you have to take a Chinese person, a Caucasian person, and a mulatto, okay, to get a Spanish person, okay? Because when, when the Chinese and when the when the white people, because remember, the original Spaniards were white. Christopher Columbus was a Spaniard. He was white. Spanish comes from Italy. Italy was ruled by Queen Isabella, who was white. So just because you speak Spanish does not mean you're Spanish. Sp the same way Spanish people speak Spanish is the same way black people speak English, through slavery and conquest, okay? And so when the Spaniards and the Chinese people was coming up the coast of Africa, and when they was landing in the Bahamas, and when Sir Francis Drake, who was a his, who was a Spaniard, okay, was going on his weak ass circumnavigation, and they conquered the Bahamas, South America, Central America, and North America, and the Chinese and the Spaniards was raping all them black people and was creating mulattoes, and then they was raping the mulattoes. They was creating Mexicans and Spanish people. This is why white people call Spanish people a spick, because a spick is a racist word to call you a mutt, because they call in the Spanish person a mutt because they saying they mix with so many different other bloodlines. OK, do your fucking research. And so this is just like when I ask you, how did the wolf become a poodle? Did the wolf become a poodle? Did the Chinese man evolve into a fucking Mexican or did a whole lot of genetic engineering and and unnatural sexual reproduction take place to create the Mexican. And this is not to attack nobody who's of Spanish descent. This is to talk about an ugly, 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 ugly history of genetics and slavery, which has taken place and given. Fuck a man, that shopper spit look like a fire breathing dragon, dragon. I be lit up like a fire breathing.